it okay if my nose is starting to run a little bit? How's it? Welcome to the University of Arizona Salsa Challenge, where we separate mild cats from wild cats. We got the big cat here right now. We're at the Reforma restaurant in Tucson. Great food, great drinks, and most importantly, great salsas. Tommy Lloyd, we've got six of them here. How do you, how do you, do you know Tucson's the salsa capital of the world, right? Yeah, I mean, that's what I've heard. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm a little intimidated right now, to yeah. be honest with you. I mean, the spice deal is really not kind of my thing, but hey, anything for the cats and anything for you. It's gonna it's gonna be your thing before it's all over with. Uh, one thing that a, a lot of the fellas have talked about uh, is w when I've asked about the program, they've talked about the culture. What, what do you, what is, what's the culture that you hope they're talking about? Well, I mean, hopefully, you know, it starts with the simple stuff, you know, relationships and, and doing the right thing. You know, I, I don't think it takes much effort to do the right thing and something we always encourage our guys to, to focus, you know, on doing the right thing and you know and making going above and beyond the standard not the exception uh, they talked a lot about that international trip you took they said that really was a great bonding experience and one thing they said that really stood out was uh you switched roommates every night yeah. and uh so what, 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 what was your takeaway what was your, what was your hopeful takeaway going in and then coming out of that well, trip? well the hopeful the takeaway is Two, two things for me was like, for, for well, it's three. For one, have an international experience. I love traveling. I think there's so much to be learned in the world. And, and obviously we see everything that's going on in a place we were a couple months ago, which is a little crazy. I think that's good for our guys to see. Two, I wanted our guys to learn about the history of Arizona basketball and, and what it means to play here. And you know, I, I think the more you know about a place, the more willing you are maybe to dig a little deeper, to go, to go an extra mile. And, and, and I, that's something that, that I wanna to continue to build in this program. And then they gotta to get to know each other. You know, it's so funny, I mean, in, in this, maybe in the world in general, but especially these kids today, they, 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 their phone is their world. <laughs> and, and so all their friends are kind of these, these fake friends or whatever on your phone. And it's, it's hard for them to develop real relationships. So I was like, you know, I get they might develop one or two on the team, but I'm like, no, no, no you need to know everybody. I mean, you need to know how many sisters, you know, uh, you know, Crevis has or brothers, you know, I mean, you know, you need to know about all these guys. Like, I think that's really important. So, I mean, that, that was kind of the goal. I think it was mission accomplished and you know what? It's about to be tested. Yeah, yeah, they, they got to know each other. Coach is about to get to know some salsa right now. We're gonna start right now. Salsa de la Casa coach is the first one. It's right here. <laughs> Uh, Can you translate that we, for we me? We start mild to wild. Uh, no, but you've got enough guys who speak enough languages. I think yeah, we yeah, can yeah. find somebody. Salsa from the house, I guess. Nice. Sweet, huh? I like that, yeah. Not bad. Got a little more bite than I would expect in the first one, though. Well, yeah, but we're, we're you know it's it's a slow it's slow steps up the ladder here. Let, let's 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 break down. Give me a give me a quick breakdown. Start with the breakdown of your bigs because yeah. you got a, you got a lot of bigs. Yeah, I love bigs. Yeah. Um, yeah, we we got you know four seven footers and then you know, uh, Keyshawn. So you know I think it's really important to have depth inside the way we play. You know we're a little bit old school. We're not afraid to throw two big guys out there. I think there's a lot of advantages to be found in that. And if we can find a way to overcome some of the disadvantages that come with it. I think it suits us well. So, you know, you got Big O, you know, who's been with me for a, a lot of years and he has a special place in my heart. Not only because he's such a good player, but how he's overcome and dealt with adversity in his life. It's really cool. Um, and this guy's been through a lot, you know, his, his entire life. And he continues to kind of rise above and, you know, and then right when we think we're getting him to the next step, it seems like inevitably something happens and maybe knocks him back down a step or two, but he picks himself up, dusts himself off, and comes back bigger and better than ever. And it's, it's really inspiring. Um, you know, Dylan Anderson is a, is a local guy who um, I think is going to be a great Arizona Wildcat over the course of his career. And, uh, you know, he's, he's one of these guys that, you know, maybe started out, you know, really heralded coming out of high school and then they get to college and maybe it's a little tougher than yeah. they expected. And, and, you know, you try to prep guys for that. But, but when the reality hits, sometimes it's hard to deal with, and he's handled it like a complete stud. And, and, and I think he's gonna be rewarded for that, and I think Arizona basketball is gonna be rewarded for that down the line. You know, you got Keyshawn, Keyshawn Johnson, you know, transfer from San Diego State, just, uh, just a complete stud. An unbelievable teammate, unbelievable character, and just um, love coaching him every day. And uh, he just, you know, he, he really brings a smile to your face, and, and, and the way he, helps his teammates is uh it's really inspiring 
I love him. And then uh, Big Crevis. Yeah. Um, you know, the the Lithuanian, Mount Lithuania, or whatever you want to call him. Um, yeah. Obviously, I've had a lot of experience with Lithuanian players, and, uh, and and he's done a great job, you know, really coming into this program. I think he's going to be a real impact player. And then Henry Visar, you know, Henry, you know, suffered an unfortunate injury last week, but you know really trending in the right direction supremely talented and 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 i really enjoy coaching henry you know because you know again maybe like dylan you know things didn't come as easy as he thought they would um but but i love coaching him and watching him kind of deal with the adversity that comes with trying to be a high level basketball player and and i love his smile I mean, he's got an incredible smile and when you you coach him sometimes or maybe you know make a little sarcastic joke here and there the the smile he gives you know you know definitely brings a little joy to my life yeah, and then you got Big Will also. Big Will, who, who's in. gonna who's gonna design a supersonic jet on his own? I think yeah, mechanical big, engineer. Big Will is uh, <laughs> he's incredibly helpful in practice. I mean, just to have a guy that can to can bang with Umar and uh, and, and you know and he, and, and he just so much fun to have around. And he's he's got such kind of a quiet, sneaky personality, and he's a mountain of a man. He's a good basketball player, um, but he's an incredible student, and and he's definitely gonna impact this world and 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 ways way beyond the basketball court plus he had a mustache which gave him an unfair advantage in the yeah, salsa challenge can, can you rip that off yeah. is it like a, one of those <laughs> tape on? <laughs> uh you're gonna wish you had a, an unfair uh, more of an advantage here as we dip number two this is mexicana hey, this, this is, looks like a is, simple pico this is tasty i got a good chip here some bubbles in it well but it's breaking on me wow so that's a big scoop, right? Mm, that's a good very, fresh, ta very tasty. Fresh pico, that's good. You could pour that on it. You could pour that on Cheerios, and it'd be good. Wow, well, that would be an interesting combination. Right. I never thought about that. All right, oh. All right we, we we did the bigs. Let, let's go to the let's go to the back court, then the wings. Give me the back. Break down your back court. The back court. Well, you know, you got um, Jaden Bradley, and you know, Jaden's a transfer. You know, he was at Alabama last year, and um, it's been so much fun to watch him go. He's, he's a really quiet guy by nature, and and you know you, you know as a coach you're like man I wish you would talk more this and that and uh, but I'm really seeing him engage with his teammates and kind of I mean, he's, he's got a real dry sense of humor and um, and you know he, he's going to be a really good player. I mean he's really going to help this team. He's just a, the consummate winner and is willing to do whatever it takes to win and. Um, and, and he's been a joy to coach. You got Kylan Boswell. You know, yeah. Kylan comes in and, you know, came a year early, 17 years old, and had a heck of a, you know, kind of a... He got a little run with you last he, year, he too. He played really well the, yeah. the second half of the year. And, you know, he's got big, big dreams and big expectations. And, um, and you know, kind of watching him go through it as a young guy, you know, for me, you know, my, I know my, I feel like my number one job is just... just kind of help with helping with the, the maturation that comes with becoming a good player you know because sometimes you want it so much so fast you know that that you know are you willing to to kind of ride the up and downs a little bit with the process and, and embrace them because it, it's what it takes you know or or do you want everything at once so you know we're kind of helping him space it out a little bit and i think he's going to have an incredible year for us and then you know caleb love you know caleb's um you know a transfer you know from north carolina obviously he's you know Got, got a story that's been well documented and it's been a ton of fun coaching him and you know I, I, I'm, I'm all for um, you know I don't even know if he deserved a second chance or whatever you want to call it but for you know redemption type stories and, and he had you know some great experiences at Carolina and he had some tough experiences and he's he and I've had talks about it and I think he owns both of them I think which is really cool for a young guy just kind of his maturity based on his the life experiences he's had as a young man is pretty impressive and i think he's primed to have a great year and uh and and, and i'm glad he's on our side yeah. and then el jefecito connie but yeah no conrad man he's he's so much fun i mean i, I think tucson and university of arizona is going to love him over the course of his career he's he's got a fearlessness and a feel for the game that's really unique and uh you know i i watched him a couple summers ago at a tournament over in europe and you know, Kylan was supposed to be playing. It was like a big national team tournament, but he he got injured and he couldn't play. So I was already going. It was in Malaga. I mean, come on, who's not who's going to turn down a trip to Malaga? You know, and spent a, spent a couple weeks there on the beach, and and I was going to these games and watching the Spanish team, thinking, man, I can't take my eyes off this kid. You know, but yeah, he's too small, this and that. But you know, over the course of the tournament, you watched him and watched him and the way he impacted the game. I'm like, you know what? 
he's a perfect fit for us. And, and so he's come and he hasn't disappointed. You know, and I, I was kind of like the only one who had seen him which is a little bit risky. Right. So they had coaches seats, use your assistants, do all the work, and you kind of, but this was one, I'm like, no, 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 I want this one. And I think our staff was like, we're really gonna take a 5'10 <laughs> point guard? I'm like, yeah, no, he's great. Yeah. And and he's been fun to watch, so. 5'10, um, yeah. but he plays like a six footer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no doubt about it, hey, he does. All right, listen, Wings kind of inspired our great salsa challenge. So t t let's talk about the Wings on your team. Well, we'll, we'll start with the Swede, Pella Larson. I mean, he had a struggle here. I mean, I don't Pella, think... Pella has yet to sit in the seat. Oh, and the hot, he Pella is next up I'm, in the hot seat. Because I'm just saying, like, that. I think the only spice they have in the whole country is black pepper. I mean, yeah. I don't think they have a... Yeah. They don't know what buffalo sauce is or, you know, salsa. He's going to be singing ABBA songs before this <laughs> thing's over. Yeah, maybe Ace of Base. Yeah, Ace go. of Base is kind of big, you know, right. like a little bit more his age. But, uh, no, Pat Pella's been great. He's, he's one of our most experienced guys, and... Um, I think he's really going to make a big jump this year. I mean, he's helped us win so many basketball games, you know, and, and it may be more of a supporting role, And but I, I think he's really ready for that next step this year. Um, you know, you got Philip, the Serbian. He's so much fun to be around every day, and his love for basketball is second to none, and, and, and you just want him to have success, and I think he's right on the precipice. Right. He's just kind of got to keep pushing. And then uh, Morauskas, um, yeah, I mean, he... He's definitely not afraid to shoot the ball, you know, right. so I, I wouldn't imagine he'd be afraid of this. He would not pass the salsa. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> uh, that's actually, it, it's a little bit of a running joke that's probably gotten out of hand. He actually has been doing a really good job passing the ball lately, but we have a ton of fun with him. He's just one of those guys, he's wired to score. Right. Um, you know, I've been around a few of them. I guess a kid named Adam Morrison. I'm not, not trying, right. trying to put them in the same sentence, but, uh, yeah, he was you know. Pretty good. He was pretty good. Yeah, he, 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 sh he shouldn't have passed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> And, and KJ Lewis, I mean KJ, um, he's fearless. Yeah, yeah and and, and uh, I'm hoping to match him. Yeah, well, let's find out because uh, right now we're going to move to salsa verde, which is the mean green right here, coach. You know, I, I didn't realize what verde meant till I moved here. It's everywhere, you know. You hear verde, 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 and, right. you know, and I'm like, oh, it's the color green. So. Kind of a sweet taste, but it got a little sting on it. It hasn't stung yet. Right. Maybe it's coming. I mean, this would be great like on a burrito or something. I mean, all this would be great. I mean, just, yeah, I could bathe in some of these. <laughs> give me, give me, uh, tell me where a couple Tommyisms came from. I love you, but, because Big O, when I laid that on him, he laughed. He's, I said, what comes after but? And he said, uh, so, something that you're in trouble about. I don't about. know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I think anytime you're going to kind of come at somebody a little bit, maybe you want to, you know, throw in a little compliment first or to soften it a little bit, and uh, it must come from that. And it's kind of with our players taking on a little life of its own. And um, yeah, but I do love them. I really do. I, I mean, I and I always tell our guys, you know, my my favorite players are the ones I'm currently coaching. You know, because those are the guys uh, that deserve my love and attention. It, it's it's so easy as a coach to you know, to glorify the players you had in the past, which you should, you know, and, and you put them up on this pedestal. Um, and then, you know, to, to be, you know, fixated on the players you're gonna get in the future because, you know, it's always enticing. But I think just being now in the present with the guys you got is where the joy's at. And so I really do, I, I love the guys. I, I love them when they win, I love them when they lose. You know, I know it's my job to maybe get on them a little bit here and there and get their attention. Um, but I always tell them, it's coming from a place of love. Right. How about let it rip? Because that could have a whole lot of meaning, especially when you're sitting down in front of a <laughs> bunch of chips and dip. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I think, you know, you prepare, you, 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 you practice. You know, why, why would you want to go to an, a competition conservative? I mean, you're, you're going there to, to, to hopefully compete and win. And, and, and I think just having that, that edge and that fearlessness to, um, you know, and let it rip can mean a lot of things. I mean, uh, obviously a connotation was shooting, yeah. you know. Um, you know, I don't know, maybe, maybe it could mean something hanging with Bill Walton in his teepee, you know. I mean, there, there could be. Uh, there, there, there could be, that could be a let it rip, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, um, but, but I always saw our guys let it rip with effort. Uh -huh. Effort. I mean, that, that's where I want them to, to kind of let loose and not hold back. And, um, yeah, it's a little bit of a mantra that we use. And, 
and um, you know I, I, I try to coach by it you know mm-hmm. um, you know uh, you know I, I used to play pickleball by it but then yeah. the really good players told me that like yeah, we're, we're gonna get into your pickleball yeah, obsession they, here shortly they, they tell me I suck when I let it rip so they told me I gotta like <laughs> let it dink <laughs> All right, we're going we're gonna to let it rip right now because we're moving to the, the next three. And as you can see, they've kind of got an angry color about them. Uh, and the first one is heirloom habanero. And habanero alone, I believe, means uh, the cattle are dying. So that uh, this, <laughs> the, the, this could be it right here for you. Is that too much, you think? You go back for a little more? Just make sure it touches your tongue. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Just, you want me just to swallow this thing whole and no chewing is my only chance? Well, listen, it'll make for better television. Over. That has a deeper burn. Right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, what, what, is, what, is, what is the, uh, the, the pickleball obsession? Or where, where, what, you know, the, you've got your own court. Uh, I've heard you stack the team in favor of your, your side. Uh, that, that's come that's, from some good sources. It's called good recruiting. <laughs> Yeah, I definitely don't want to be the alpha dog. I mean, yeah. I want to be the beta. Yeah. Um, you know, I, for me, I needed something to move and compete. You know, can't mm-hmm. play basketball anymore because my mind so far surpassed any physical ability I ever had to play the game. Right. So, you know, that's frustrating. And um, yeah, but I think for me, the great challenge was, you know, playing a game and, and, and trying to learn some, uh, learn a new skill. And while you're competing, and hey, I get my ass kicked all the time, all you right. know, but I love playing and I love, you know, maybe talking a little trash, you know, I definitely do a lot of that when I play and, uh, you know, with friends, you know, and I'm, when you, I, I'm not good playing with people I don't know. Right. Because to me, pickleball is, you know, there needs to be a, a back and forth between you and me across the net and, and just having a good time. But, I, but I've really enjoyed just getting out there and, you know, get out there playing with other people, met a ton of great people doing it and, you know, and, and, and getting my ass kicked a lot. And some days, you know, I, I hit a good shot or two and that gets me to come out the next day. But it's, uh, it's, been, a, it's been an absolute ba- blast. Speaking of ass kicking, let's get down to Arbol here, number five on, on our list, all right? Is it okay if my nose is starting to run a little bit? Oh, I, I, if it's not, you need to check your position. <laughs> I don't know if I've ever like done anything besides like a pico or just a mild salsa. So yeah, I'm a little nervous. Spilled on my shorts. There you go. Well, it wouldn't be you if we, if we did. <laughs> um, uh, How's that flavor for you? You know, you need to you're gonna go add a chip to try and yeah. <laughs> try and slow it down a bit. A little bit, yeah, yeah. Tell me about your relationship with the Beastie Boys. Wow, man, now this conversation's going a good direction. <laughs> I mean, they're my all-time favorite. And why? You know, I mean, I mean, I think they were there my whole life. I think was it 1986? License to Ill kind of came out. Um, you know, I, I might have been what, probably fifth grade or something. Salem Armory. So, yeah, that was a later in high school. <laughs> great experience. Um, but yeah, no, fifth grade, yeah, just getting into new, listen to that first album, and then, you know, they kind of, I guess, whatever, young guys that went their own way and kind of lost themselves a little bit in stardom. And then they came back, I think, in 92 with, um, no, no, 89 was Paul's Boutique, which is the best hip hop al- hip hop album ever made. Okay. Bar none. Um, and it was awesome, but it was just a complete flop because it was maybe so ahead of its time, you know, in one of those deals. And um, man, I used to listen all the time. And they had the cassette tape that was blue, you know, and you just you know take it into A side, the B side, and um, I listened to that thing. And, and every time I would shoot baskets in my driveway, I had what well, you know. We used to call them the ghetto blaster, right? Oh yeah. I had to put, you know, I'd open my window and put it in there. Tommy, turn that down. <laughs> oh yeah, no, there was a lot of that going on. <laughs> a lot of that going on. Um, and I, yeah, and I would just shoot for hours and just, you know, play those Beastie Boy albums. Then in '92, you know, Check Your Head came out because they kind of, you know, they kind of went down and they kind of came back, and it was really cool. They came back kind of as a 
maybe a more authentic version of themselves, you know, themselves, where it wasn't the, the frat boy deal. They weren't trying to just be funny, you know, they picked up instruments, you know, because they do have that kind of a punk background yeah. and they, they kind of tapped into that a little bit. They tapped into some instrumental jazz stuff, which is really cool. In fact, like you've never heard of like The In Sound from Way Out. It's a great album. It's an all instrumental album by the Beastie Boys. And um, yeah, and there's some great live tracks on that album. And then, and then from there, they kind of became the Beastie Boys that the people know today, you know, with, with, with their later albums. So just, you know, it's always been one of my dreams is to, is to meet one of those guys. And, and honestly, to meet them, to thank them. Because they, I mean, they brought a lot of joy to my life. And, you know, I've seen them in concert, you know, a few times. And, and uh, you know, me and my, my friends growing up kind of really shared a bond, you know, and a lot of it was centered around the Beastie Boys. Well, when, when this clip runs on MTV, perhaps one of the Beastie Boys will see it and get yeah. a hold of uh, uh, of the Arizona is it, is basketball. This, is this MTV or VH1? Well, you know what? I don't know. Which one plays music videos anymore? Do either uh, of them? I think it's like MTV4. Because that, <laughs> you, know? you know that your, 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 your Beastie Boys breakdown kind of sounded like behind the music. Behind the uh, behind the music, which yeah. was a VH1 and MTV, yeah. you know MTV. I remember being there when it first came on, the first song, "Blinded by Science," <laughs> Thomas Dolby, yeah. and, and and but now MTV, you turn it on and it's and it's you know, it, it's, it's, I want my MTV. No, I want my old MTV well, back. I am a huge fan of ridiculousness. It's a great show. But can you really, is MTV 24 hours of ridiculousness now? Yeah, it's I, literally just like episode after episode after episode. Yeah. And I mean, it's great stuff. And, you know, I do watch it on the daily. 57 channels and nothing's on. Uh, <laughs> but I'll tell you what's on right now, Tommy, is Chingana with the ghost pepper. Oh, is the warm up over? This, this, is, this is where we separate the mild cats from the wild cats right here. Mm -hmm. Is this enough right here? I mean, you can, know. Can I, can I request a bean dip after this? <laughs> oh. It just never gets old except when it does. <laughs> <laughs> oh. That's hot. It spreads. It kind of hits you. At the, it it kind of builds up and I can feel the, mm -hmm. I can feel the, the heat here and here. Mm-hmm. Um, your message to uh, two messages. Tell me how you tell me you you recruit a kid. Put me in that living room right now. You're telling you got a, you got a five star kid. You want him at Arizona. What what what? How do you sell him? Always undersell and and fight to over deliver. You okay, know? what's that mean? I mean, I, I think you got to let them know it's going to be hard. You know that they have an opportunity at your place. Um, but it's not going to come easy. And, and, you know, don't sit there and promise them the world. And I mean, I've always thought that anything worth earning, you know, an opportunity is you need to earn it in front of your, your teammates or your peers. And so, I mean, to, to me, that's always the pitch and probably lost a few recruits over the years with that, but I think you get the right ones. How's the burn right now? Love it. Right. Loving it. Yeah, I actually like it. I mean, yeah, yeah, I, I think I'm almost starting to sweat here. Oh, that's uh, good. How, your your message to the Arizona basketball fan. As you, this was your fourth season, right? Third sure. season. Third season. Mm. My message to the Arizona basketball fan. Yep. I mean, it, this is a great place to work. It's an honor for me to, to sit in the seat that I do, and I don't forget about that on a daily basis. And, you know, I just think... We live in a society now where people just, it's so easy to sit around and kind of be a little complacent or complain, you know. I mean, I, I hope our program provides people an opportunity to engage and participate. You know, that, that's 100% the thing that motivates me is winning for the community in the University of Arizona, not for myself. I mean, I'm a, I'm a kid from Kelso you know who's a division three basketball player and, and here i am sitting in a seat you know that you know fred snowden lou Olson, sean miller have sat in and you know when, when you put it in that perspective it, you know it's, it's pretty awesome and and so um I, I feel like i'm i'm in a good way and you know i heard you say a couple nights ago at dinner when we had dinner with the cowboy you know he asked you what your your next dream was or your dream and you said i just lived my dream yeah 
And I think that's pretty awesome. And I'm, I'm living my dream. So I don't feel like I, you know, need to, I mean, of course I want to win championships, but I want to win them for the fans and for the University of Arizona, for the players, their families. To me, you know, spreading that joy and that success amongst them is what drives you, not, not any one thing that's going to do for my life. So, I mean, that, that would be my message. Like, let's, let's do this thing together. Let's find opportunities to take it to the next level together. And, um, and you know, just know that, you know, when I put my head on the pillow at night, you know, I'm, I, I want to do great for them. And that's my message. Or when you put your head in a bucket of ice cold water, because that number six will fire you up. And we are fired up with Coach Lloyd. That does it for another edition of Mildcats versus Wildcats. Make sure you check out the Arizona basketball, uh, all the fun stuff on the YouTube channel. And it's not just cat basketball on there. It's Wildcat Athletics in their, to in their totality. Until then, salsa up.